Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 24th of October. Rajnath Singh visits India-China border ahead of fourth winter since Ladakh standoff. Sri Lanka approves free tourist visa for seven countries to boost tourism. And people in India and Nepal celebrate Durga Puja and Vijay Dashmi. And now for all the details. Keeping up with tradition, India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Tuesday celebrated Vijay Dashmi with security force personnel stationed at the forward post in India's Arunachal Pradesh bordering China. Accompanied by Indian Army Chief General Manoj Pandey, the Defence Minister also performed the traditional Shastra Puja or worship of weapons. Singh said the brave armed forces personnel are living testament to the ethos of Vijay Dashmi, which signifies the victory of good over evil. He said there is no other option than to bolster the security apparatus in the current global scenario and added that all efforts are being made by the government to strengthen the nation's military prowess. Singh's visit along the LAC comes at a time when the confrontation between India and China has entered the third year. New Delhi has maintained relations cannot be normal until Beijing starts adhering to past agreements. And on the occasion of the 78th United Nations Day, Indian Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Tuesday reaffirmed India's commitment to the UN and its charter. Taking to Platform X, Dear Shankar emphasized the significance of reformed multilateralism, fosters fairness, inclusivity and multipolarity, and stressed that a more purposeful UN will deliver on the aspirations of the Global South. The UN Day marks the anniversary of the entry into force in 1945 of the UN Charter. The day offers the opportunity to amplify common agenda and reaffirm the purposes and principles of the UN Charter. India has consistently called for reforms in the UN, keeping in sync with the changing geopolitical dynamics and aspirations of the emerging economies. Moving on, Pakistan's Supreme Court has ruled that military trials of civilians are unconstitutional. A relief for dozens on trial for ransacking military installations during protests in May after the arrest of former Prime Minister Imran Khan. The government had said it would use military courts to try the suspects, sparking fears over fair process. But the Supreme Court, in a short order on Monday, declared that such proceedings under the Army Act would be of no legal effect, with trials of some harder and three people to move to civilian criminal courts. The suspects have been in custody since May. The decision to use military courts was taken by the government of Khan's rival, Shehbaz Sharif, who has since completed his term in August and handed over to a caretaker government that will oversee an election slated for January. And will the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction cigar in a report has warned that the Taliban is benefiting from the U.S. education funding through the establishment of fraudulent NGOs to receive donor assistance. Since seizing power in 2021, the Taliban administration has greater control over national and international NGOs. It has barred Afghan women from NGO work and sought to push out foreign organizations from the education sector. The report highlighted that the U.S. has spent around $185 million on education in Afghanistan, which had the interference of the Taliban. The U.S. watchdog said Taliban policies and priorities have reduced the overall quality of education with a drop in the number of teachers and a decrease in teacher quality. The Taliban has not been recognized by the international community so far over accusations of widespread human rights abuses, particularly against women and girls. And moving on, two trains collided in eastern Bangladesh late on Monday, killing more than 16 people and wounding several others. The incident happened as a freight train smashed into a passenger train from behind in Bhairab, about 80 kilometers northeast of the capital, Dhaka. The death toll was likely to rise as rescue operations were ongoing. A senior official of the Dhaka Railway Police said, adding that initial reports suggested that the freight train broke the signal leading to the tragedy. Authorities have launched a formal investigation. Train accidents are not uncommon in Bangladesh, 
mostly attributed to unsupervised rail crossings, poor signaling and track conditions. And in a bid to attract more tourists, Sri Lanka's cabinet has approved a proposal to grant free visas to travelers from seven countries, including India, China, Russia, Malaysia, Japan, Indonesia, and Thailand for five months. Foreign Minister Ali Sabri said the free visa travel has begun with immediate effect as a pilot project and will continue till 31st of March. The scheme is part of attempts to hit a target of 5 million arrivals by 2026. The country of 22 million people famed for its beaches, ancient temples and aromatic tea saw its tourism declining first by the COVID-19 pandemic and then by a severe financial crisis last year. But the tourism industry is seeing a turn around now with Sri Lanka clocking a million arrivals by September for the first time since 2019. India is the largest source of tourists with over 200,000 arrivals, followed by Russia with 132,300 according to the latest data. And devotees across Nepal and India on Friday celebrated the auspicious occasion of Durga Puja and Vijay Dashmi with religious fervor by performing prayers and rituals. Take a look. Dressed in traditional red and white saris, Hindu women on Tuesday performed Sindur Kela, marking the conclusion of five-day-long Durga Puja, a festival dedicated to the victory of Goddess Durga over demon king Mahishasur. In a traditional ritual of bidding adieu, female devotees also offer vermilion at the feet and forehead of idols. A beetle leaf is also touched to the face of Goddess Durga, symbolically wiping off tears as devotees believe the Goddess is leaving her parents' house and commencing the journey towards her husband's abode. हमारे सुख शांति बने रहे इसीलिए मां को हम शिंदूर से और बोरन करके विदा कर दे Meanwhile in neighboring Nepal people observed the 10th day of the Shine festival by receiving tikka and blessings from elders The festival which begins on Vijay Dashmi is considered one of the most auspicious in Nepal Elders and the family smear tikka a mixture of vermilion powder curd and rice grains on the head of their family members, blessing them for prosperity in life. It is believed any new assignment or campaign can be undertaken on the day of the shine. On the 10th day of the say, we get, uh, we get Dika from our elders and, and they give us blessings and they wish us for our good education, good prosperities and many other good things. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.